Okay, you know the story of the talkative tortoise? No. Haven't heard that story? Okay, because some time ago, I'm just not following the schedule as usual. Okay. Some time ago, there was a tortoise. You know what a tortoise is? The tortoise lived up in the mountains. And the tortoise was very lonely. You know why? Because the tortoise used to talk too much. That's why it was called the talkative tortoise. Because as soon as he started opening his mouth and started talking, he would talk like this, he would never stop because he talked so fast, he never interrupted his talk at all, he kept on talking, talking, talking until all the other people couldn't say anything at all because he's such a talkative tortoise and everybody else had no chance to say anything at all, they all ran away, even the rabbits and the, the fish would always hide because the talkative tortoise, once he started talking, he would never shut up, he kept talking, 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 so fast and so loud, no one else had a chance to say anything. And if you talk that much, all the animals don't like you. They run away and they hide. And so because of that, talkative tortoise was so lonely. But every, every uh, summertime, there was two swans would fly up into the mountains for vacation because it was very hot down where they lived. So they fly up to the mountains and the hills. And they were such kind and wise swans that they would allow talkative tortoise to talk to them all the time. He never shut up because talkative tortoise didn't like to speak to him, but they wanted other people to, to listen to what he had to say because talkative tortoise, he had lots to say and he was a very important tortoise and so he had to keep on talking and talking and talking. Other people couldn't say anything at all. He's a talkative tortoise. And, and only the swans would listen to him. And sometimes talkative tortoise would talk so much that even the stars ran out of twinkle and late into the night and talkative tortoise was still talking. And it got to the point late in the summertime, it was time for the swans to fly back to where they lived. And talkative tortoise got so afraid. He said, I'm so lonely without you guys. I always like to talk with you guys because you're the only ones who will listen to me because everyone else would run away. I don't know why because I'm a very nice tortoise. I don't really talk too much. I'm just, people don't understand me. I've got too much to say. And other people won't listen to me. That's why I have to talk so much. <laughs> but I'll be so lonely without you. And so the swan said, Mr. Tortoise, we can take you with us as long as you promise one thing. Yes, I can promise to do that, said the talkative tortoise. We tortoises are very good at keeping our promises. We hardly ever break promises because we're very good tortoises. Tortoises always are very trustworthy. We can always say it. And a half an hour later, half an hour later, the swan said, you have to promise to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> oh yeah, I can do that very easy, said talkative tortoise. We might tortoises hardly ever open our mouths at all. We are very good at keeping our mouths shut. We hardly ever talk at all. That's an easy thing to do. I can do that. No trouble at all. Yes, I'll keep my mouth shut. No problem at all. Just a little... And half an hour later, they told the talkative tortoise, the two swans, they got a stick. And one swan bit into one end of the stick. And the other swan, right end of the stick. And they told the talkative tortoise to bite on into the middle. And with the talkative tortoise biting on into the middle, the two swans, they flap their wings harder and harder and harder and harder. And you know what happened? Nothing. Tort <laughs> <laughs> the tortoise was too heavy. People who talk too much tend to put on weight. <laughs> and talkative tortoise was so fat, he could hardly ever fit into his own shell. So, they got a lighter stick, and the two swans, one on one end, one on the other end, they told Tog the tortoise, bite on into the middle and don't let go. And the two swans, they flapped their wings harder than they ever flapped before. Harder and harder they flapped, and they flapped harder and harder and harder, and they rose up into the air with the stick and with the tortoise biting on into the middle. And that was the first time in history that a tortoise ever flew. <laughs> it's true. 
And so the tortoise went higher and higher up into the air and he was taking all the notes about his experience so he can tell his friends when he got back. And then he went further higher up into the mountains, his little lake got smaller and smaller and went down to the foothills and over to the city and it was, everything was going wonderfully well until they passed over a school. <laughs> Just when the children came out from school, about, was it 3.15? When you finished school? 3.30, okay. 3.30 <laughs> came out of school and a boy happened to look up into the air. What do you think the boy saw? The tortoise. Yeah, and the boy looked up and said, hey, look at that stupid flying tortoise. <laughs> and, and the tortoise said, who are you calling stupid? Oh, bang. And the tortoise ended up as hamburger patty. Splash. And you know why? Why the tortoise died? Because he could not keep his mouth shut when it was important to do so. So remember, when your parents tell you to be quiet, if you don't, you may end up like talkative tortoise. <laughs> Splat. <laughs> okay, that's a little tale about talkative tortoise. So you want another couple of stories? A couple of stories for the children I think would be wonderful because Pinapata is going to be at 10.15. Okay. So, so would mother... you like some stories, children? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> okay. But you want... An uh, interesting story or a scary story? Scary. 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 Okay. This is a very scary story. There was this uh, Australian man and he went to the temple to listen to a talk and after the talk was finished he was wanted to go home there was two ways to go home the long way round back to his house or the shortcut through the cemetery <laughs> but he didn't believe in ghosts do you believe in ghosts now he never believed in ghosts either. So he said, oh, okay, I'll just walk straight through the cemetery. Shortcut. And I don't know if you've ever been walking through the cemetery at night, but they have street lamps by the road, but through the cemeteries there's hardly any street lights at all. It's dark and spooky. And he was walking <laughs> through the cemetery. He got halfway and everything was going fine. But after he got halfway through the cemetery, he thought he heard something behind him. I don't know if you ever heard, thought of somebody following you. But he thought something was following him, so he walked a little bit faster. And whatever was following him was also going fast too. He could hear it behind him. Bump, bump, bump. So, he walked even faster. And whatever was behind him was also walking faster. Bump, bump, bump. And so he started to walk really fast. Bump, bump, bump. And then just before he got out of the cemetery, he made a big mistake. He decided to look around and see what it was that was after him. He you know what he saw? He almost, his heart almost stopped. He never believed in ghosts, but now he actually saw something supernatural. What was following him was a coffin. 
coffin. Yeah, you know the boxes they brought dead people in? And it, it was, it, yeah, it was, had all cobwebs all over it and dirt falling off it. And it was a vertical coffin. Bump, bump, bump. Chasing him. And even if you don't believe in ghosts, you see something like that. And he ran as fast as he could. Bump, bump, bump. The coffin started chasing him. Bump, bump, bump. <laughs> and the coffin was going faster than him. It was catching up. It was running as fast as he could. Bump, bump, bump. The coffin was catching up. And he got to, find, he got to the, his house. He had another gate like we have here. You think he went through the gate? No, he jumped right over it. <laughs> and he managed to get to the door of the house. As the coffin came to the gate, the coffin couldn't jump. Well, the coffin did. Bump, bump, bang! And he broke down the garden gate, the coffin. It was very strong. And so he, 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 he put his hand in his pocket to get his keys. And he got them out and he dropped them. He dropped them on the floor. Bump, bump, bump. And the coffin was coming after him. And he picked up the keys, the first key which he possibly could. He put in the lock. He was so lucky. It was the right key. <laughs> and he turned the lock, opened the door, ran inside, and banged the door shut just as the coffin came to the outside. He could see the coffin through the window of the door. And he thought, I just escaped. Bump! As the coffin started to hit the door, bump! <laughs> and, the, and, the, and, the, and the, the, the wood of the door started to splinter, bump! It was breaking down the door. So he, yeah, he had no other place. He ran up the stairs. The only other room which had a lock on was the toilet. The bathroom. <laughs> so he ran his, just as he was about the top of the stairs with a major bump! <laughs> and the, the front door broke down. That was a really a very strong supernatural ghost coffin. And he was at the top of the stairs about to go into the, the bathroom and the coffin looked around and saw him at the top of the stairs. Bump. Bump, bump. As the coffin began to climb the stairs. So, he ran into that bathroom and he locked the door, put whatever he could against it to barricade himself in. As you could hear the coffin coming up the stairs. Bump, bump, <laughs> bump, bump. bump. And when the coffin gets to the top of the stairs, BUMP! <laughs> As it started to hit the toilet door. Now, if that coffin had enough power to break down the front door of a house, the toilet door would not last that long. At all, if at all, yeah. <laughs> so he didn't know what to do. He was against the back wall of the bathroom when with one mighty bump, <laughs> the coffin broke through the bathroom door. And there was no other place to run. He was just in this small room and the coffin was coming after him. But as it came closer and closer, just automatically picked up something from the shelf and threw it at the coffin. <laughs> and the coffin never moved after that. It was absolutely still from that time on. Be no, because no. Because what he threw out, he didn't realize it was cough medicine. He stops it. <laughs> It stops the coffin! <laughs> you asked the, the, the pharmacy. 
It stops the coughing. <laughs> Was that scary enough for you? No. <laughs> Funny. Okay. Another ghost story for you then. Have any of you gone on holiday overseas? Okay. Have you ever gone to England? Because many people who go to the country of England, they go to visit the castles. Because those castles are hundreds of years old. Some of them thousands of years old. And so one of my friends, she went to visit England and she went into one of these castles. When she went into the castle, it was such an old castle and many bad things had happened in those dungeons of the castles. Many nasty things happened in there. So when she was taking a tour of the dungeons underneath the castle, even though she never believed in ghosts, still it was really spooky and creepy. Because every time when she, she stood, stood on the floorboards, it would make really weird sounds. Every time they opened these old wooden doors, as it would open. And even the windows, whenever they passed a window, you could hear. <laughs> it was the scariest castle she'd ever been in. <laughs> and when she <laughs> they finished the tour, she was, even though she said she never believed in ghosts, she was still so happy that she got out of the dungeons to the clear air. And she couldn't help herself but asked her guide, had a tour guide, and said, are there any ghosts in those dungeons, in this castle? And the tour guide said, in all the years I've lived in this castle, I've never seen a ghost, not once. And then she asked him, how long have you lived in this castle? He said, over 300 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> be careful. Okay, well I'll give you some tests. First of all, math test. Well, that's, that's not scary. How many of you are good at math? Uh, okay. Me. Me. Okay, so really listen very carefully. No. No. Listen very carefully. No. A little, can you do um, subtraction? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so listen carefully. 26 sheep in a field. 10 die. How many survive? What? How much? Ten Sixteen. Sixteen is the wrong answer. Okay. So some of you, you've heard this before? No? You have? Okay. So those of you who haven't heard it before, listen very carefully. Twenty-six sheep in a field Ten die. How many survive? It's true. The answer is ten. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Can, can I listen? Listen carefully. Tw shush. Twenty sick sheep. I told you to listen carefully. Twenty sick sheep. 
Okay, okay, I'll give you a quick. <laughs> 26 sheep. Okay. Okay, yeah, quiet. Okay, now English question. Okay. What word? It's a word. What word begins with T, ends with a T, and has only got T in it? Begins with T, ends with T, it's only got T in it. It's a word, it's not a letter. Who knows this? Yes! Teapot, yeah. Teapot. Begins with T, ends with T, it's only got T. Okay, one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, just one last one. What word? What word begins with an E, ends with an E, and it's only got one letter in it? Begins with E, ends with E, and it's only got one letter in it. So it's a word. Okay, what is it? En what? Envelope, yeah. Envelope. Begins with E. Ends with E. We said it got a letter in it. Put a letter in it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. One, two, three. You ready? All together. Sadhu. Sadhu. Now, a big one. Sadhu.